I'm going to be changing out the quick release on this uh, Simmatic Alpha Mini. Um, now, there isn't necessarily a good reason to do this because the quick release on the Alpha Mini is pretty dang solid. Uh, there's no play that I can find, it's just it's really, really uh, tight and solid. However, when I built my uh, F1 sim here, um, I needed to uh, to replace it because I needed a shaft. Uh, the the motor itself isn't actually that attaches directly to the wheel. It's much more for, forward in the simulator, and so it's attached to a shaft and then attached to a um, a quick release. And when I did that, I used a cheap quick release from Amazon. It's a uh, eighteen dollars, twenty dollars, something like that quick release. It's pretty cheap, a lot cheaper than the one that comes with it. But you can buy it without a quick release if you want to go this route and you want to do some some uh, custom installation, which is nice because uh, this is like eighty or ninety bucks. Uh, but since I already have that quick release in the F1 sim, and I want to be able to uh, uh, move my wheel between uh, between this sim and my other sim. Uh, which is going to get this wheelbase here and I need to change out the quick release. Uh, it is a pretty simple process as long as you have an adapter because uh, the problem that you're going to run into is that these six bolts here which are four millimeter bolts rather than five millimeter of which are standard on uh, on on wheels uh, uh, they they don't match the uh, the standard six seven pattern uh, they're a little bit little bit smaller tighter whatever you want to call that also smaller bolts uh, but however on the other side of the quick release it, it does have a standard pattern and you can see maybe here in comparison that it is considerably wider i don't know how well you can see that or if i'm strong enough to pull it closer to the camera maybe yeah there we go uh, so need an adapter for that. The good news is I'm going to link to uh, a 3D printable adapter in the description so you can just grab that. Uh, removing the old quick release is pretty easy. It's not super tight so you don't need to, anything to hold the shaft while you do it. Uh, it's just removing the, removing the hex bolts that are in here. We may skip forward on this part because it's uh, maybe a tad bit boring. Alrighty, so when it comes out, these it's going to be connected like this. I've removed this already and uh, gotten the uh, connector out. I don't know if I'm able to show that well. I'll try to show at least this side of it here on the camera. You can see the, the connector in there and the only good way to get the connector out there well, I guess you could probably get it out there with a screwdriver and some patience but a really long needle nose pliers is really the way to go because then you can you can grab the connector on both sides uh, and just pull it out uh, which makes that pretty easy and no chance of damaging the the actual uh, connector which you don't want to do just in case you want to switch back uh, which you may want to do at some point especially if you have a symmetric wheel uh, those seem pretty uh, pretty cool and well made and they're also wireless but they still take power through the hub so uh, there are power connectors in here so uh, you may want to have that for for some uh, uh, future possibilities in case they come out with a wheel which you absolutely have to have uh, which might still happen to me uh, and if that does happen it's going to be a little bit tricky for me because uh, I'm going to have to change out also in the F1 sim which is easier said than done with the shaft because that's, that's a lot of customizations there so what I'm doing here now is just uh, 
starting off the screws or the bolts that uh, will go in here. Uh, I'm not going to attach it right away because before I do, I want to make sure that uh, I get the nut in on the other side because it's easier to do that before I actually put it on the uh, on the wheelbase. Well, if I do get these started here, then there is zero chance of me losing them. Now, uh, in the adapter on the other side here, uh, there are uh, nuts, uh, holes, which are going to hold these nuts in place, so you can uh, uh, easily attach the, uh, the uh, quick release later, but they're a little bit tricky to get in because it's very tight. I can't put them in by hand here. They're just the hole is too tight. Uh, the trick to doing that is to get one of the screws You're going in here because everything is very tight in this thing. So not a lot of play. And then uh, the screw in here. Uh, if I tighten it on the other side and uh, just hold it a little bit, uh, as as it starts tightening down, it'll pull the, the nut in into the uh, pulls it into the seat right there. And now I'm gonna cut till when I'm done with all of it. Now you can see that uh, all the bolts have been seated in the bracket. They're they're pretty tight in there. They're not going to come out on their own. Um, so it's uh, ready to be installed now on the base. Don't want to tighten anything down right away. Make sure that you get all the holes properly aligned. They don't ruin any of the threads uh, in case you want to reverse back later. Everything is pretty well seated, I'll tighten it down. Now that's all tied, now we can attach the, the quick release. Now, as you can see, this is maybe, I don't know when you can see that, uh, the quick release has kind of a cup uh, here, which of course does not fall into the, uh, into the base. Uh, might fit if you want to change the, the 3D print here and create a, a div, divot in it. Uh, I don't know if that's really a good idea because it might impact the strength of it also. But uh, I do have this other adapter in case you use the same quick release, which I'll link to also to make things easier. Uh, and then uh, we'll fall in here. Uh, I see now that, that uh, 
these printers are necessarily wide. I made it 91 millimeter, maybe a, maybe it's 92. It could probably be a little bit narrower if you want that. Be careful though if you if you do want to make it smaller. Uh, don't don't shrink down the the print because then you're also mess with the oh, skitters. Then you'll also mess with the the whole pattern. You don't want to do that. So uh, if you want to make it narrower, you have to make sure that you're just cutting the ads. Anyway, um, now that I have that. I'm gonna pull the quick release off. Yeah. And this is not nearly as well lubricated as the other one I got. So don't know what to make of that. Maybe it's just not that. Well, I know it's not really that high quality. Twenty bucks for a quick release is uh, probably not going to get me the highest quality available. So let me get these going here. Looks like maybe I don't have enough of them. I thought. want to get them started uh, before I line everything up and get them into the bracket here. I think this bracket is very really tight. So you want to print the uh, PLA because uh, that's what this is. This is APS. You may run into pro shrinkage problems because I believe ABS does shrink more than PLA, so uh, it m things might not fit quite as well. Might so you might have to drill out holes, something like that. Um, I printed this spacer with 80% infill uh, and this bracket with 90% infill. Uh, they need to be pretty solid. Uh, go all done now you have a cheap quick release on your cinematic alpha mini uh, i suspect that the same will probably work on, on a normal alpha uh, as i don't think they'll have a different quick release on those uh, or potentially really any magic base uh, don't know for sure though so these quick releases do have an index here, so when, uh, when you do attach that to, a, to your wheelbase, you want to make sure that uh, it indexes correctly, because otherwise it's going to be fiddly to get your wheel on, on the base. Uh, in an actual car, that wouldn't be much of a problem, because the uh, chat's not going to turn much, because the wheels are heavy, etc. So uh, it's going to be pretty solid, so you can move it around. But with these, there's no power to these. Uh, they're they're pretty loose. So the quick release that's intended for a car is going to be trickier to index. So just make sure that you get it right uh, on the wheel. So the the indexing is on top always. That way, it's going to be easy to align the shaft and the and the wheel that you want to put on it. And one of the, um, so I don't know if you can see it here, there's a little bit of side to side play in this this quick release. Uh, probably akin to uh, the play you'll see in uh, like the Fanatec quick releases, probably why they're about to bring the new version, maybe even a little bit more than that. But it's actually not more than my actual race car. Uh, my actual race car does have more play than this. Uh, it, I, it's not something that I ever think about or worry about when I'm driving it because there's plenty of other things to worry about. 
and since it's side to side like play uh, it's not something that uh, impacts your, your driving or your, your feel however uh, I get why why many uh, especially in sim racing uh, get annoyed by a little bit of play like that uh, I guess we come from plastic wheels which kind of bend and are toys and then when we we uh, buy expensive equipment uh, we don't want it to feel like a toy anymore and so play like that is something that we just don't want to see uh, but in reality uh, many race cars do have play in, in the wheel uh, and the quick releases uh, including mine so uh, I don't really mind it what I do mind is when my wheels are bendy if I can if I can actually like bend the wheel because uh, it's not good plastic that's that's when uh, uh, that's where I draw the line at, at least but anyway so this quick release is nowhere close as good as this one but uh, uh, the same applies though for any uh, quick release that you might want to put on your base uh, maybe you have a race car and you want to use your race car wheel uh, in your simulator uh, and so you want to get the same quick release in your simulator as you have in a race car in which case uh, these brackets are going to help you out and make that really easy so yeah uh, that's pretty much it oh ah, one more thing uh, one of the great things about using a direct drive like this in your uh, custom project uh, for, for a simulator rather than a bus drive is that uh, the direct drive at least these and I think probably most others you can uh, you can pretty much center them anywhere well, what I mean by that is uh, uh, I uh, I mounted it upside down in my simulator because it made more sense to bolt it down and through the uh, through the uh, damper cover but um, and then it's just a, a easy alignment in the software tool, I just set the wheel where I want it to be straight, and then I just tell the software this center. So it's super easy with these uh, direct drives, but with the bus drives, they have actual physical uh, 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 blocks at the end of the movement. So you can't really say, you can't really change uh, what's upside down on it, right? Uh, I don't know if that made a whole lot of sense, but <laughs> uh, yeah that's that's it anyway uh, thanks for watching and hope this helps with your project